Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Hillsboro at Everglow Neon. And no, it's not Christmas time, and yes, you are looking at Santa Claus, but he's a perfect example of what neon can look like. And now, this blue motorcycle that you're looking at is, a, is another original creation of Everglow Neon. And uh, there's an interesting story behind Santa here that we're gonna tell, but Jeff Dunn, you've been, you've been doing neon for, what, a couple of decades, yeah. I guess. And you're in this shop in Hillsboro, and it's fascinating because you've got signs in here from all over the state that are gonna be repaired. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've got original creations like this, and what I want to show our viewers during this uh, during this half hour is what it takes to create this and, and to fix the neon mm -hmm. signs yeah. and what goes into neon because it's a mystery to a lot of people. Yeah, and there's a lot of steps involved in it um, from designing the pattern and uh, selecting what size glass and colors you're going to use and um, and then designing the electrical layout of it too on how the electricity is going to flow through the sign. That all has to be taken into account. Yep. Then you bend the glass and. Uh, when that's done, it, you fill up with gas and paint it, and then try to put it, get it put together without breaking it. <laughs> you break a lot of stuff, a whole lot of stuff. I, it, it is. It's, there's so much that goes into it. I love this Santa Claus story though, because what you did was you created this for um, the Christmas light program mm -hmm. here in yeah. Hillsboro to be auctioned off, mm -hmm. so that they could afford the, the Christmas light program. And doggone it, it worked. Didn't yeah, it? yeah. They raised about between fifteen and sixteen hundred dollars uh, raffling off Santa mm -hmm. here. And um, local attorney, uh, Barb Adams, won it, and she still had it. So I was like, could I borrow this so we could take a quick look at it? Because yeah. it is really a good example of, of what can be done with neon. And he's made out of 14 different colors, 14 different types of glass uh, to create him. There, there are a limited number of colors, too, aren't there, with neon? Well, there's about 60 that, that are available um, that you can come up with, but some of them are, are quite difficult to come, to mm -hmm. come by. While we're here, I just want to direct the camera over here because this gives an example of the sort of projects that come in here. You can see that neon, it, it's, it's got some staying power, but glass breaks, mm -hmm. you know, um, and things happen and they need to be replaced. So you've got a lot, you've got your work cut out for you, don't you? Yeah, and uh, it's been a little tricky getting some parts during COVID, um, but I've, we've got two uh, Ford tractor neon signs and, and they quit making tractors right after World War II ended. So these are... These are quite old. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a 1939 uh, Budweiser That's sign. That's the green one? Yeah, yeah, from before when they changed their uh, logo to red. Um, so this is about a 2000 or late 1990s Budweiser sign. Mm -hmm. And then we have one here from uh, like 1939. And it was made in St. Louis by Federal Brilliant. Um, so that's a local sign. And so is this one, this VAT Pils mm -hmm. Pilsner Beer, mm -hmm. which is Pride of St. Louis. And then up here we've got a uh, metal gold ice cream neon sign that was brought in for repair. <laughs> and um, this is super fragile because back then, this is probably from the 1950s, they didn't have plexiglass and for some reason they didn't mount it on a metal frame. So the whole thing is glass. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna this does work. So he wants it painted out and then mounted on plexiglass so they can just hang it on the wall and plug it in. Because mm -hmm. it's unbelievably fragile in the state it's, it's currently in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so during this program, you're gonna show us how, how you design. Mm -hmm. First you gotta design yeah. it. Then you gotta choose the glass. Mm -hmm. And then you have to bend the glass, yes, right? And yes. then you color the glass? Uh -huh. On some things I do color yeah. my own glass. And, and then, you, then you add the gas. Mm -hmm. And then is that, is that pretty much done? Uh, after that, you have to um, paint out the sections of the tubing that you're not supposed to see, and then you can uh, you can mm -hmm. assemble it. Yeah, and so then plug it in, and it yeah. should work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of steps, and it's all done by hand. Yeah, sure. so, Thank yeah. you. Okay, Jeff. Some patterns are more intricate than others. I, I asked for a simple one, mm -hmm. so that we could get a good look at how this is done. But what you're going to do is, you see, this is part of a beer sign, mm -hmm. and you, you you've got some of the glass bent. It's already out there in front, and you've worked with some of the angles and, the, and some yeah. of the bends there that you've already done. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is show us a real kind of a simple procedure, okay. like a, a 90 for the letter okay. E or something like that. Okay, okay this is how you, yeah. how you bend the glass. So we have to blow in the tube um, because when you do bend it, the wall tends to collapse. So you just need a little puff of air um, to puff it back out to the, to the right angle.
And there's several torches available, so um, you can use this. There's a there's also a ten point crossfire. So, and, and this is a natural gas torch. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and, and it's, it's mixing um, one part gas with ten parts air, and that gives you about as hot of a flame you can get without having to use mm -hmm. oxygen. Do you ever overheat the glass? Um, not really. Uh -huh. And you eyeball the ninety degrees. Mm -hmm. so. put it on here and hope that it matches and then do next couple marks of where I'm going to do my next bends at mm -hmm. and then I usually um, it depends on what type of thing I'm doing but it, it's safest if you uh, um, rotate through the glass so that you don't have a chance to pick up a hot piece of glass by accident and end up getting burned because uh, that's, uh -huh. that's a pretty pretty big issue yeah because there's been times in the in the past where I, I once I picked up a, a circle that I just done and, and burned like six fingers. Oh man, yeah, that puts so, you out of commission for a while. It does. It? So you got to be real careful not to not to um, pick up something that's hot. Identify what you burned. So I'll do a, a 180 degree bend here. And on this, the outer side of the bend needs to be. Um, heat it up higher because uh, it's going to have to um, be formed. So the inside needs to be a little bit cooler and the outside mm -hmm. of the bend needs to be a little bit warmer. And, and you learn this through making mistakes, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of. <laughs> it really took about five years to really mm -hmm. get good. Wow. That's neat. Yeah, and there she is. That's the top of the R. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next one will bring it down to this level. Mm -hmm. And so you just kind of rotate through these. And so this, the word beer here has four, basically four pieces of glass that I, I'll work on on yeah. it. Okay, Jeff, we just saw you bending white glass, or I'd call it white glass, or it's clear glass or white glass, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. Other, other things are available, and, and companies make colored glass yes. if you don't want to color your own glass. Mm -hmm. There is colored glass available from Italy, and we can kind of see that down here where the glass is more or less like stained glass, uh, mm -hmm. whereas most of the glass that's made in the United States is clear, and then it has a powder coating on the inside of it. So we can kind of take a look at, these are some of the standard colors. You got a whole bunch of different shades of white up here on top, and the whites generally go from like a bluish white to a brownish white at this end. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's probably at least 20 different shades of, mm -hmm. of white available on the market. Mm -hmm. But um, this shows 60 different colors that are available from Technolux out of Italy. Um, and uh, then if, I you, do if you go this route, it's more expensive though, isn't it, to buy colored glass? Yeah, it's, it, it probably adds, you know, it probably triples the cost of the sign mm -hmm. to use colored glass. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the colors are just pretty much impossible to get now other than like uh, ruby red, novial gold. You mean because of COVID? Um, it's not so much that, they've just cut back on, on what they, they stock and, mm -hmm. and what they manufacture here um, and what's available in the United States. Yeah. And a lot of the really unusual colors aren't, aren't available at all. So I've kind of learned how to coat those uh, myself. And we can look at here, this is like pre-World War II um, ruby red glass and they call it ox blood ruby. Um, because it's such a dark color and it's really got like a jewel-like uh, appearance mm -hmm. when it's lit up. So it's really, it's just a stunning shade of, of red. And you can't buy that anymore. No, they don't not make like it this. Anymore. Um, you can still get ruby red, but it, it, it's not that, that dark, uh, no. almost a black-like um, appearance. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really unusual. And another one that's from before World War II that I kind of inherited is, um, uh, it's uh, uranium glass, and uh, they quit making this right around World War II because they found better uses for uranium. Um, mm -hmm. But they left me about a hundred sticks of this, um, and it's it's really an eerie shade. We can take a look at a, a little sample of it later, mm -hmm. but it's really an eerie shade of, of green when it's lit up. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a lot of signs from that era, so I've repaired several signs for people, and where you might need just like a four inch or a six inch piece to to right. fix somebody's tube for them. So having that is really, you know, yeah. it's, it's really a, a great thing. 
Jeff, some of these tubes are tiny, tiny, and some of them really, I mean, they're real tubes, you yeah. know, you could, you could blow through them. Yeah, so um, whenever you make neon, um, like if you're gonna do a two, two inch tall letter, you might use some eight millimeter glass. Um, if it's something that's big, that's outdoors, you may use like a 15 millimeter glass. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bunch of different sizes. So like the window signs you see out and around, those are generally made out of like nine, 10, 12 millimeters, sometimes 13. Um, so there's a bunch of different sizes, but the problem with that is that if you need green glass, you've got to have a 25 pound case of each one of those colors mm -hmm. on hand. So for, for some of the um, standard colors that you use a lot of, it's worth having those cases yeah. around. But if you want to do like artwork where you need a small piece of like, you know, coral rose or something, mm -hmm. um, I've kind of learned how to uh, coat the tubing myself. So yeah. I kind of demonstrate how that's done. Okay. So this is different, and uh, it's the way that they coated tubes back in the, the 1930s in the United States. And uh, the neon bender will go ahead and, and completely bend the tube, and then when, that, when that's done, we'll take um, some glass beads and uh, just a few drops of binder, and then pour the beads into the tube. And then you have to uh, sit here and shake them through the tube until you're satisfied that um, the entire length of the tube has a coating of of binder in it. And the binder will be kind of like a glue that will mm -hmm. make it stick to Yeah, it just, it's just slightly okay. sticky. Okay. And so once that's done, these beads are poured out and you pour um, a phosphor in. And I've got a bunch of different colors that I use. Um, this one is blue. Um, and so just like a quarter teaspoon of this is probably enough to do about a hundred foot of tubing. Uh -huh. So I mean, there's just a barely a dusting inside. Uh -huh. So once, once you've poured the uh, uh, phosphor through and you get a nice even coat um, you can see here that this has a coating of blue on the inside yeah. of it that I've done so we can take this over and what are you attaching uh, to a power supply to, to turn it oh, on Wow <laughs> oh that's beautiful yeah so I can fill about um, I think 16 colors on my own now and I'm probably going to add a few more later this year. But I, I originally envisioned um, using the, you know, to, to do these for just for the special colors that you can't afford to buy, you know, an entire right. case of, of some strange color. Yeah. Um, uh, but now I'm, I'm finding that I'm, I'm doing some of the whites because there's kind of a, a bright white that's kind of a bluish white that's kind of hard to get a hold of, and then a, a warmer white that's yeah. used a lot. So, so what is the, the substance called that you're buying? That, that it's, it's phosphor. It's phosphor. And, yeah. And a lot of them originally were made from minerals like willamite um, and shelite were green and blue, mm -hmm. but now there's synthetic um, alternatives available to those. Mm -hmm. So the powder coating is actually non-toxic. Um, and it takes very little of it too, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. That's a nice thing. So it's just a really, uh, just a, a minute, thin powder coating, but each color has a different consistency. So some of them are, are more difficult to pour through the tubes than, than other colors yeah. are. So it's, it's taken a lot of notes and I've four years of just practice and messing around with it um, to, to get to the point where I can really coat tubes and they look beautiful, mm -hmm. as good as a factory tube would look. Yeah. Um, and it eliminates my, my inventory. Yeah. Uh, so all I have to do is stop clear glass and once the tube's made, if I want to make a pink, I can pour pink powder in it. If I want to make a green, pour green powder What about powder the lasting? It. Does it last as long mm -hmm. as, yeah. as colored tubes? Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's, it, it's, uh, I've, yeah. I've tested them. Um, I've, I've got some that, I, that have burned over a year now, but I try to test them for um, basically a thousand hours. And once I hit that thousand hour mark, if the tube still looks good and it's bright and hasn't stained or anything, um, then it's good to go. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually pretty happy that I've done this because I had to have several people on Facebook who I was friends with uh, that have neon shops outside the United States and, and they kind of worked me through all the, mm -hmm. the details on how to, how to go about coding all this stuff yeah. myself. Now Jeff, when we saw that blue light, the phosphor blue light, there was some prep work that had to go on before that because yeah. you had to prepare the glass to accept the argon mm -hmm. which made that color blue. Yes. And this is how you do that, right? Yeah. You, the, you've got glass here that hasn't been prepared in any way. Yeah, this one's not been prepared. So what I'm gonna, getting ready to do is splice on the second electrode. And the electrode is what introduces the electricity. It's got the wires uh, for the ends of the tubes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and splice the second electrode onto this tube.
Is that natural gas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With 10 parts air. So it gives you a, a lot hotter flame. So what you've just done is you got all the air out of that. Well, it just, um, I had to blow in it to puff it back out because mm -hmm. it kind of collapsed whenever, I, uh, whenever you bend it or, or splice. And so right now it just has atmospheric air in it. Mm -hmm. um, so we just don't want it to, to break so it's up off the, off the thing. So the next step from here would be to actually uh, fill the tube with gas. Um, so that'll be the next step once this cools down a little bit. Now you use two kinds of gas, argon or and, neon. And neon. And so we're going to be using neon in this tube. And uh, this is some pre-World War II red uh, glass we're yeah. just using as an example here. So I splice on an electrode to both ends. Um, and you choose neon for this because of the color of the glass? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because neon is primarily used for red, pink, and orange. Um, and argon tubes are, are all the rest of the rainbow mm -hmm. uh, are, are done with argon. Okay. So once this cools off, what, what are you going to do next? Uh, we'll fill it up. Uh, we'll take it over here and, and uh, vacuum the air out of it. And we'll also sterilize the inside of it and uh, process it and get it, um, get as much of the air out as we can. And then we'll fill it with just a tiny bit of neon. And then we'll hook it up to the electricity and see what it looks like. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jeff, what's next? Um, we're going to splice this tube we just made onto the manifold where um, we'll remove any error and impurities that are in it uh, by heating it up. And then um, after a few minutes, all the air will be removed out of it and we'll, we'll add just a little bit of neon to it mm -hmm. um, to, to make it a red tube. You have all manner of torches, don't you? Mm -hmm. And the, these are actually two different types of glass. The electrode. And you're sterilizing it. Mm -hmm. all, all I'm doing is just splicing it together right oh, now. Oh, okay. And then again, puffing a little puff of air to, to blow mm -hmm. it out to make sure that it's uh, to make sure that it's it's got an even, you know, that it's not crimped shut. Mm -hmm. So the next step here. Um, there's all sorts of like fancy temperature gauges and stuff, but I still use newspaper. That's what they've been using because um, it'll it'll burn at about 425 degrees. So once it hits that, you know that um, the tube has gotten hot enough. And I also have a little temperature thing here that you can you can kind of mm -hmm. rub on it and make sure that it's it's up to the right temperature. Mm -hmm. But so when this goes aflame, we know it's hot enough. Yeah, it'll just basically char is what it'll do. Oh, okay. And so. Um, uh, once that's on, once that, once it reaches that temperature, then we just wait uh, a few minutes for the air to get vacuumed out, and then we can we can add some neon gas to it. So let me come over here, turn these a few times to, just to make sure that they're not going to leak, because these valves have to be taken apart and cleaned on a regular basis. Okay, now I need to go over to here. Mm -hmm. We won't want to touch this because it is a really high voltage. So now I just open the main stopcock and we're starting to, to remove some of the air from the tube. And now we've... Ha ha ha! Look at that! Yeah. Wow! And don't, don't touch it. Okay. So we're just going to... Um, is neon going in now? No, this we're just... Oh. Once you remove a little bit of air, the tube will conduct electricity. Uh -huh. So right now we're just getting the tube hot. And now we're going to try to get it even hotter quicker. Wow. So this is about 20,000 volts that's running through the tube. And you can see the ends are starting to get red hot. Yes. And the, the newspaper's beginning to char. Yep, the newspaper's smoking.
So that's about it. Okay, now we, so you just sterilized it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so all of the impurities that were in the glass have now been released because of the heat. And now the vacuum pump is, is removing them from the tube. Um, so they're getting sucked through here, down into the, mm -hmm. to the pump. Mm -hmm. So we, now it's just a matter of, of waiting and, and hoping that piece of glass is, is uh, fairly good. I think that glass changed colors. It, it went does. to black. Uh -huh. it, it really does. And even the yellow, it, it turns, at first it turns orange, then it turns like almost a, yeah. a brown color. But, but when you put neon in there, it will go back to red mm -hmm. again. Yeah, once it cools down, it'll, it'll turn back to I'll red. I'll be darned. That is fascinating. Okay, Jeff, that tube is cooled now. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? Okay, the next step is we're gonna fill it with gas. So um, we're gonna fill it to a pressure of about 12 millimeters of mercury with neon. So I close off the vacuum valve, and then we watch this, and we wanna go up to about right at 12 millimeters. Now that's not neon. Yeah, this is neon. That is the yeah, neon. Yeah, okay. the, now the tube has neon in it, so okay. now we're gonna flash it, and it looks like it's good. Okay. So the next step is to uh, disconnect these, and then seal this off. Okay. You have to seal both ends? Just, Just one. Just the one, okay. And then we can take it over here and hook it up to the power supply and see how it looks. Now usually it takes a few minutes for it to, to get completely um, age in because there's a little bit of impurities and the, the little bit of impurities that are still in the tube will get reabsorbed into the metal ends. Mm -hmm. But um, it's looking pretty good right now. It'll be a darker color than that when, when, you're, when it's ready for use? Or? Yeah, it gets a little bit darker um, once it burns in fully, mm -hmm. but um, that's pretty much the final color right that's there. That's neat. Yeah. And this is the uh, uh, World War II Pre -World era. World War II, yeah, era uh, red tubing. Tubing. Wow. But you can see the, there's a little bit of clear glass here, so that's kind of what the neon looks like. And then the red tubing is acting like a colored filter to make it a, a darker shade mm -hmm. of red. Um, but it's really a, a beautiful color. It is. It's a shame vivid. they don't make it anymore. Really vivid. Well, Jeff, we were talking about the two gases that you use, mm -hmm. argon and neon. Yes. They're kind of the same except different colors. Yeah. Um, they're both gases and um, generally I, I get them in tanks, but occasionally as a backup I have glass flasks. And uh, this is what the argon looks like. It's got a blue discharge. Yeah, and keep that on for us. So it's kind of purplish too, yeah. isn't it? So that's what color argon is. Yeah. And so this is neon here, and it's it's got that characteristic red neon glow. Mm -hmm. So you know if you use neon, you're always going to get a reddish tint to it, no matter really mm -hmm. what you color yeah. the glass. You're always yeah. going to get a reddish. Yeah, it's either red, pink, or orange. Typically, mm -hmm. are the only three colors. Mm -hmm. And that red is really, I mean, it's used in it used to be used in airports because it. The foggier it was and poorer the weather conditions, the, it was still extremely visible. Mm -hmm. um, so they've always used it like for, for things like that, for beacons and stuff. Um, and, and the containers they come in, are, are these two, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, bats, typically yeah. it comes in a, a 25 liter um, tank. Yeah, and, and that's the argon, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, the back one is neon. Mm -hmm. And there, there's really only about enough in there to fill maybe eight, I mean, eight balloons. But if you're gonna fill neon tubes with them, um, you're looking at like thousands of tubes that it'll fill compared to, um, it, but it's really just enough gas to fill about eight, uh, like balloons. balloons yeah. So, so neon tubes are, are like really economical as far as that, that mm -hmm. fuel yeah, goes. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of gas yeah. in them. Yeah. So just a little bit goes a long way. So this possibly, you know, 70 tubes off, off just what's in this, um, which yeah. isn't much. And it's just at our atmospheric pressure, so it's not like under, under pressure. Yeah. Fascinating, thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. This is a mystifying combination of science and art. And if you're like me, you'll never look at a neon sign the same way again. With another Illinois story in Hillsboro, I'm Mark McDonald, thanks for watching.
Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.